Game Demo. All right, welcome to today's Daily Demo. Uh, joining us is uh, Aaron from EA. Welcome aboard, Aaron. Hey, great to be here. Thanks for having me. So you brought uh, you brought something with with you today. I've brought The Sims Medieval with me. Okay, and The Sims Medieval, this is this is not your grandfather's Sims game, is that <laughs> this right? This is not your grandfather's. It, in theory, your great, 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 great grandfather's The Sims. It's The Sims Medieval. We've taken everything people love about The Sims, taken it to the Middle Ages, a big, dramatic, epic time, and added some features that change the way you play The Sims. We've added heroes, quests, and kingdoms. Them, and we'll see some of that today. So this is, yeah, this is a very, very different, for the folks watching home, this is a very, very different, I think, step uh, in a very different direction for The Sims. I mean, instead of being this open-ended kind of life simulator where you create these people and then kind of let them have jobs or relationships or what have you, it seems like it's very directed. You have characters who are kind of always on quests and you're trying to earn these kingdom points to, uh, to develop your kingdom and, you know, I guess unlock new characters and eventually get a high score at the end because unlike any other game in the Sims series, Medieval actually has like a, an end screen that says, hey, you, you accomplished this many quests. You could win, yes. Many points. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so, so very different game and, uh, and I guess we've got the game running here, is that right? That's true, we do have the game running. Let's, uh, let's take a look. So this particular demo, there's, there's a lot of features in The Sims Medieval. This particular demo is all about the professions. There are 10 professions. We're going to talk about a few of those today. So we will zoom on into our throne room. Here we are in the king's throne room. This is where the king hangs out. Over to the right is, uh, that's his table where he writes laws. Right there where you can see the scribe mm -hmm. sitting. Then up, uh, just above that is the diplomatic table. He can declare wars um, and, uh, as well as negotiate treaties. There's where the king takes his meals, a very sort of plain looking dining room. Now to the left, it's a very different looking room. That's the king's bedroom. And I threw that in there because I want to show off customization. We're not going to see a lot of customization in the demo, but all the great customization tools of The Sims 3 are in The Sims Medieval. So if you're a customizer and a creative person, you're going to love The Sims Medieval. So we'll go back into the throne room and start talking about professions. Our first profession we're going to talk about is the wizard. Every profession in The Sims Medieval has a specialty, something they're really good at, something that they'll level up and get better at. Wizards or, um, or, or sorceresses, uh, should you have a female, cast spells. And right now our wizard is going to cast a spell called Inferno on our poor king. Now, the spell system includes everything from blessing to heal to teleport, so you have uh, oh, there he goes. Oh! Well, he doesn't like that, does he? No, the king took a hit there, and you'll see the king actually took some damage, so much damage, that he is now in his hospital clothes. He should really go get to the clinic and speak to the physician, but he's not going to. The king, now we're talking about the king, the king has many powers, one of which is to punish people. Um, he is going to send the wizard to a little place we call the Pit of Judgment. Mm. The Pit of Judgment is where bad sims go, sims who don't keep up with their job, or sims you just feel like getting rid of at the time. So the constable will come in, he will approach the wizard, give him what for? What? No, not me. I didn't do it. Oh! And then we'll zip down to the judgment area and you'll see you could put sims in stocks, you could throw tomatoes and eggs at them. Um, the pit is where the pit beast lives. Uh, he's a giant blue tentacled monster. We actually haven't seen the whole monster. We've only seen tentacles come out of that particular pit. Now, normally when you throw sims into the pit, um, they're going to get eaten. There's a bit of a fight and they get smashed. He's a high level wizard and so something different's going to happen. When you put high level characters in there, they put up a, a much better fight. And so you're seeing the wizard actually casting spells and defending himself. And I don't know the outcome. As with all Sims games, the Sims have free will. They have um, a mind of their own. And I don't know exactly what's going. He might die. He might live. There might be some mini games to play as he's wrestling around with the with, with the pit beast. But on with the rest of our demo. So we'll we'll come back to him later. If he dies, we'll we'll get a, a, a sign that lets us know. Um, our next hero we will talk about is the spy. So the spy, he's really good at eavesdropping. He can collect information on, on other territories. Uh, one of the ways he makes money, and that's one of the reasons you have a profession, aside from getting good at certain abilities and skills, is you gain money. He could actually pickpocket. So he'll tell the king to look over there, and zoop, right out of the back pocket. And now the spy has earned um, some simoleons. And another cool thing the spy can do is poison people. He's also an assassin. So earlier in the game, he crafted a poison uh, called Reaper's Scythe, and he could poison literally anyone in this castle. Now, everything we're seeing is very high-level gameplay. We've smashed a lot of high-level moments together, so a player won't see all this so close together. Um, but 
a player can achieve all this as they play through the game. So the spy pours a little drinky drink. And it doesn't smell very good at all. And then we'll compress time a little bit as the spy zips over to his victim, who is, who is the spy poisoning? The spy is leaving the room. The spy has gone upstairs. As with all demos with The Sims, things happen that don't, all, you can't quite put a demo on rails with The Sims. Looks like our master builder is going to take the goblet of poison and he's going to find a comfy chair to sit in. There he goes. And he'll take a hit off of that. The spy is just, oh, that didn't taste very good at all. And, oh, and cue the Grim Reaper. Now the medieval Grim Reaper obviously looks very different yeah, from the Grim Reaper from The Sims 3. Oh. He's got a few more things going on. He's very medieval. Our spy finds that to be very amusing. So as you can see, it's a pretty dangerous place. Um, and so in the, the dangerous kingdom of the Sims Medieval, you need fighters. And we have our good knight right there. And one of the things that knights can do, our demo driver is going, has a challenge now because the spy has left the room. <laughs> and as with demoing the Sims is always a challenge because yeah. they go where they want to go. Ah, she's going to challenge the king to a duel. She throws down the gauntlet. The king accepts that challenge. And he will get ready to fight. They get in their fighting clothes. Now this brings up a very good point. Is this the first time you've seen the Sims take out weapons and try and hurt each other? Right. You've never seen them do that before. And there's a full fighting system. So I'm choosing between defensive stances. I could actually choose special moves. And as my knight levels up, and she's a level 10 knight, so she knows everything about right. combat. Um, she could actually do a whirling takedown. And as they fight on, you're actually keeping track of health and stamina. And the combat system will really come into play as you're playing through certain quests. It's very important to be uh, victorious in, in key battles. So, as you can see, it's a dangerous place. And because it's a dangerous place, you need a physician. We will come out of the throne room, zoom off to the right, and in we go to visit our doctor. Doctor is a very important physician because Sims get the plague. Sims get hurt. Sims get all kinds of weird diseases. Um, our doctor can uh, craft potions and medicines at her crafting table. She could put people on that operating table and attend to their various injuries. Um, but very quickly, she can diagnose. And so she will diagnose that Sim there who seems otherwise occupied. There she goes. Take a good look at her. Check out the tongue. How's that arm doing? And she is diagnosed with infected oh that's bad news as with all diseases in the me me medieval times leeches to the face will pretty much cure you does good i love having my leeches on my face i appreciate that and so the doctor as she levels up will get much better at healing people and your uh, citizens will become much healthier if you have a doctor uh, now we're visiting our blacksmith there's a couple points we make here with the blacksmith one is all these heroes that, we've, that we're meeting, I've created, I've dressed, I've given names, I've also given traits to. Every hero has two uh, regular traits um, and one uh, fatal flaw. In this case, the fatal flaw is that he's a drunkard. So I actually had to put a keg of beer right there in the background because he would otherwise get distracted and run off to the bar. So um, he is now going to craft a sword. That brings up another system in The Sims Medieval is that there is a full crafting system. Um, he could make very high-end weapons and armor based on that for with elements and minerals he's mined for. Some of these are very hard to find, very difficult to get. Uh, but we're going to craft a very rudimentary longsword now. It just need, he just has a little bit of iron. And this is another separation from The Sims 3 in that in The Sims 3, the professions, they kind of went into a building and you didn't see them work. In The Sims Medieval, every profession, you're actually manipulating the sim. So I'm, I can make decisions. If the fire is too cold, I could add more coal. If the sword that he's working on gets too hot, I could have him come out and, pa and have him pound it. And I'm I can control him to get the best result. Yeah, Aaron, so it looks like in the upper left corner, there's, a, there's heat, quality, progress. How does, how does that stuff work? So with heat, I want to keep that needle in the gold there. So if it gets too low, I'll, ha I'll make the sim. Now he's a high level blacksmith, so he kind of knows what he's doing. If he were level one or level two, he might not be so great at his right. job. So I'll say, put some coal in there and, and get the heat up. Right. If the heat gets too high, then I'll actually have him pound out on the anvil there. 
Um, and the quality will go, every time the heat gets too high or too low, the quality will go down. Um, and eventually the progress will go to 100% and I'll get a higher quality sword or a lower quality sword, depending on how I've manipulated my blacksmith. So there are going to be some of these kind of mini games for, for kind of all of the crafting. E e all the crafting, pretty much every professor has some sort of sub game um, that you can manipulate to get better results. Mm -hmm. So that's our blacksmith and a little bit about our crafting system right over here. We'll talk a little about the merchant system and the way people buy and sell goods. So our merchant is a very handy guy to have around because along with that crafting system is a big collection game and a lot of the collection involves running around the kingdom finding things. The merchant can do a lot of that work for you. So he can import things from distant lands, he can import things from the neighboring town. So all the things that are on sale at the store, he's actually got out and acquired. And sometimes you get very rare items, you can't get any other way. So you might get a rare potion or a rare weapon or an instrument with um, interesting qualities for, for your bard. So it's very handy to have a merchant in your kingdom. And we'll move on to our next profession. We'll zip right around. We'll take a quick stop at, we'll see some people practicing the royal sport of king ball. Um, it's the, the sport of kings in the, in the Sims Medieval. Over here to the right, this is also the training yard. If you want to get your knight leveled up, or your spy, or even your king, um, all the combat level Sims, they could uh, train here at the training yard. We'll zip off to the right. And we see two churches. On the left are the Jacobins. They're very, very serious, very, very strict. Um, both religions can give sermons in their churches. They collect funds and they seek to influence the kingdom and win over all the hearts of the citizenry. The Jacobins, because they're so strict and so into obedience, they do that through fear. One of the ways they, they spread fear is they put up proclamations. They love new rules. And so this proclamation will be pounded to the signpost and the proclamation, pro proclamation has been made and if, uh, it went away, but you could see the fear meter actually going up. And so the Jacobins are all about scaring people. Where to our, the right, much more friendly church. Uh, peace, love, happiness, they're a poorer church. However, they are much more gentle in their methods. And we'll have our Pateran priest uh, begin to evangelize. And you see, as he evangelizes, he's actually becoming more popular. He's gaining experience and people are listening. He might actually get converts. So if you want to move the story of your kingdom in the religious direction, you'll find that this conflict becomes very interesting. There are certain quests that really bring this conflict to light. Um, so the, a little bit about our two religions and our two religious professions. And we'll finish up with our tavern, and in the tavern is our bard. Now bards are a really interesting profession because they perform. They make people feel good. In medieval times, people can get kind of bummed out. There's plagues, there's wars, there's trade. Um, there's so many things that can kind of make people a little bit sad. The bard, when he performs, and as a level 10 bard, he can perform any song in the catalog. Um, his name is Kanye East. And as he rocks out there, you can see people begin to dance. They're going to be in better moods. They might make friends a little bit better. The bard can perform songs as well as write and perform plays. And when he performs a play, you can actually see other Sims get on stage and perform with him. So all these professions, the, you, you will level up these characters. You bring them into the kingdom one at a time as you're playing through the quest system, building your kingdom um, with all these hero Sims, telling new stories, bringing in new quests. And it, what, it becomes a very unique experience. As you mentioned, The Sims Medieval does have a lot of directed gameplay, but the tone of the directed gameplay, the directions that you take it, you have so many choices and options depending on the hero sims you choose and the paths you seek to take. Your experience is going to be very unique depending on your play style and your goals for your kingdom. So that's just a little bit about The Sims Medieval. And so we will go back to our castle and the sun will go down on one more demo of The Sims Medieval. A small taste. Yeah, and, and Aaron, I'm, I'm gonna let you finish. I'm gonna yes. let you finish. But uh, for the folks watching at home, uh, that that was a great look at the, at the Sims Medieval. And actually, um, today's trivia question uh, will give you a chance to win some great Sims Medieval swag, including a copy of the game. So uh, for those of you at home, get ready for the trivia question. Uh, what is the name of the all-seeing, almighty god deity that presides over the world of Sims Medieval? Answer now for your chance to win uh, uh, some cool medieval swag and a copy of the game. Uh, so uh, that was a great look at the game, Aaron. Thanks a lot for joining us. Uh, could you remind our, our viewers at home when the game is coming out and for what platforms? Sure. The Sims Medieval comes out for PC and Mac on March 22nd. So we hope you enjoy it. Okay. Right. Thanks so much, Aaron. Uh, thanks a lot for watching, and uh, stay tuned for, uh, for more show, uh, including possibly some more trivia prizes.